So number 11, we have this graph and we want to find the y-intercept and explain the meaning and context of this problem. So first, finding the y-intercept. So that's where the graph crosses the y-axis. x is always 0 and you can see that it crosses the axis at 300. So to explain this meaning, if you read the top of the graph it says John's saving account balance for the year, so he starts with $300 in his account. And that's what this means. So B wants to know the rate of change, which is also the slope. We need two points. We have two points highlighted on this graph for us. 0, 300 and 12, 1500. And we want to find the slope. So, if you recall the equation for the slope, m equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So 1500 minus 300 all over 12 minus 0. This is 1200 minus, or over 12, which is 100. So C wants to explain this meaning. And so the graph tells the balance in his account along with the number of months. So basically, this tells us he deposits $100 per month. And so that's the meaning of this. Number 12. A company purchased a computer workstation for $8,000. After three years, the estimated value of the workstation was $4,400. If the value V in dollars and the HA of a workstation are related by a linear equation, find an equation that expresses V in terms of A. So anytime we have a linear equation, the first thing we should look for is the slope. We know at time zero, this thing was worth $8,000. Three years later, it was worth $4,400. So now we have two points. We find our slope, which is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So it doesn't matter which one you do first and which one you do second as long as you keep it consistent. 8,000 minus 4,400 is going to be 3,600 divided by 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So minus 1,200. So we have our slope, and we also ha already have the y-intercept, which is our starting point, 8,000. So there's the linear equation for this particular problem. So number 13, light travels at a speed of 1.86 times 10 to the fifth miles per second. So we want to know how far does light travel in one day. So first, notice the difference between seconds and days. So we need to figure out how many seconds are in a day. Well, there's 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, and 24 hours per day. So this tells us how many seconds are in a day. 60 times 60 times 24 is going to be 8,000, or 86,400. We want to convert this to scientific notation. To do that, we want our decimal point to be immediately after the first non-zero number. So that would have moved our decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So 8.6 times 10 to the 4th. We want to know how far does light travel, so we're going to be using distance equals rate times time. We want to know the distance, we want to know how far. The rate is our speed, which is 1.86 times 10 to the 5th times the time, which is what we just found, 8.64 times 10 to the 4th. So start by just multiplying the numbers. 1.86 times 8.64 is going to be 16.07. We then look at the exponents, and since we're multiplying here, we add exponents. 5 plus 4 is 9. This number is not currently in scientific notation. We need to move the decimal place one time, so times 1, times 10 to the 1, and then we still have this 10 to the 9. 
Once again, since we're multiplying, we add decimals. And this specifically, or add exponents, this specifically said two decimal places, so I'm going to go ahead and round to 1.61 times 10 to the 10th. 14. In Ghana, taxis charge $5 for a pickup plus $2 for each mile traveled. So the first thing we want to know is the equation of the line representing the cost. Well, we know it costs $5. And we know $2 per mile, so the $2 is the variable. It's the one that's going to be constantly changing, so it's the one that gets the x. The y-intercept is what happens when x is 0. Well, when x is 0, you get y is 5, and this is the cost for pickup. It doesn't matter how far you go, you will always be paying $5. So next is part C. How far would it, or how much would it cost to go 2 miles? What about five miles? Well, let's start with two miles. We know the formula, and so it's just a matter of sticking things in. So for two miles, we have five plus two times two. Two times two is four, and five plus four is nine. What about five miles? Well, for five miles, we have five plus 2 times 5. So it's 10, so a total of 15. Part D, we found three points, and we want to use these points to graph the line. So the first point we found was from part B. So if I let these be my axes, ah, can't draw a straight line here. So here's going to be my y-axis, the bottom line will be my x-axis. I need to go up 5. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The next point says if I go over 2, that's going to cost me $9. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The next one says if I spend five, if I uh, go five miles, that's $15. So here's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and that was five miles here. From there, it's just a matter of connecting the dots. For 15, at a community college in Boston, teachers earn a base salary of $57,500 plus $3,500 for each extra class they teach. So part A, write an equation representing the teacher's salaries at this community college. Well, we have a base salary of $57,500, and then there's an extra $3,500 for each extra class, so this is going to change depending on how many classes they teach. Part B, what is the y-intercept? What happens if x is 0? Well, that's just the base salary. They don't teach any extra classes. What does it mean? It means base salary. We teach the bare minimum of required classes with no extra. What about c? How much would they make if they worked three extra classes? Well, we have our base salary plus three extra classes. So 57,500 plus 3,500 times three. Make sure you use order, order of operations and do your multiplication first. I missed a five in there. So 3,500 times three is 10,500 plus 57,500 would be 68,000. So that's how much they would make working three extra classes. For part D, we know how much they made, and we want to know how many extra classes did they teach. Well, we know they made 64,500, and this should be equal to the base salary plus 3,500 times the number of extra classes they worked. We can subtract 57,500 from both sides. 
and that gives 7,000 equal to 3,500x. Dividing both sides by 3,500 gives that this teacher works, worked an extra two classes. Number 16. Nguyen's New Year's resolution was to lose weight. At the beginning of the new year, she weighed 314 pounds, and after 128 days, she weighed 218 pounds. We want to find the rate of change. So rate of change is just slope. At time zero, she weighed 314 pounds. At 128 days, it was 218. So our slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we have 218 minus 314 all over 128 minus 0. So 218 minus 314 gives us negative 96 all over 128. And if you reduce that, you get negative 3 quarters. So that's the rate of change. B wants a linear equation. Well, we have just found the slope. And then we need plus the y-intercept, which in this case is 314. 17. A printing company ships X copies of BHCC student handbook to a Charleston campus and Y copies to the Chelsea campus. The company must ship a total of at least 240 copies to these two locations. Part A express this relationship as an inequality. Well, we know we have some sent to Charleston and some sent to Chelsea, and that has to be at least 240. It can be greater than, but can't be smaller than. Part B wants us to graph this. So let's start by graphing the line. So let's start with x equal to 0. That gives me y is equal to 240. What if y is equal to 0? Well, then I just have x equal to 240. So I can graph these two points. So the first one says I should go over 0 and then up 240. The next one says I should go over 240 and up 0 and then connect the dots. We then need a good test point, any point not currently on this line. 0, 0 is a great test point. Sticking that into the original inequality says 0 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 240. Well, that's just not true. So 0, 0 is below the line, so we're going to shade above the line since we got a false statement. 18. In September of 2010, Kendra has a maximum of $1,500 to purchase stocks. She wants to buy X shares of General Electric and Y shares of Ford Motor Company. General Electric was selling at approximately $16 per share and Ford at approximately $12 per share. So we know how much General Electric is selling for and we know how much Ford is selling for. And we know she has a maximum of $1,500. So she can spend less than that but no more than that. So 16X plus 12Y should be less than $1,500. B wants us to graph this. So we start by just graphing the line. And let's start with x equal to 0. In that case, we have 16 times 0 plus 12y is equal to 1,500. So that gives us 12y equal to 1,500. So at this point, we divide both sides by 12. And we get that y is 125. So we have the point 0, 125. So that tells us to go over 0 and up 125, approximately there. The next easiest point to find would be the opposite. Let's let y equal to 0. So now I have 16x plus 12, 0 equal to 1,500. So that gives me 16x equal to 1,500. Dividing both sides by 16, I get that x is equal to 93.75. So now I have the point 93.75, 0. 
So go over 93.75 and up 0. We can then connect the dots. And then we need to do the shading. So pick any point not on the line, like 0, 0. So 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 1500. That's true. So we'll shade on the line that can side of the line that contains 0, 0. 19. To enter Stoneham Zoo, adult visitors must pay $16, or as children and seniors only pay half price. One day, the zoo collected a total of $3,600, and if the zoo had 335 visitors, how many full price and how many half price admissions did they collect? Well, we know that full price is $16, and we know that half price is going to be half of that, so 8. And we know that gave us a total of 3600 we also know that if we add up all of our ticket sales, we have 335. I'm going to start by eliminating the H. So I have 16F plus 8H is equal to 3600. I want to cancel the H's, so I'm going to need this one to be negative 8. So negative 8F minus 8H is equal to negative 2680. Adding these up gives me 8F is equal to 920. Dividing both sides by 8 gives me that I have 115 full price tickets. So how many half price? Well, I know that if I take my full price plus my half price, that gives me 335. Subtracting 115 from both sides gives me that H, my half price tickets, is 220. So I sold 220 half price and 115 full price. 20. Clearshine window cleaner is 30% alcohol, while Sunstream window cleaner is 60% alcohol. How much of each brand is needed to make 80 liters cleaner? That is 45% alcohol. Well, first let's look at the volumes. If I take how much of Clearshine plus how much of Sunstream, that should be equal to how much of my mixture that I have. Next will be percentages. I have 30% of Clearshine, 60% of Sunstream, and that should be equal to 45% of the total. So I multiplied 0.3 times the number, I multiplied 0.6 times the number, so I should multiply 0.45 times the number. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this equation by multiplying by 10. And this is just going to get rid of some of the decimals. This gives me 3x plus 6y is equal to 360. And then I'm going to rewrite the first equation just to keep things a little organized. Here I'm going to go ahead and start by eliminating x. I'm going to leave the first equation alone. And multiply this one times negative 3 so that the x's will cancel. Negative 3x minus 3y is equal to negative 240. So the x's cancel. 6y minus 3y is 3y. 30, uh, 360 minus 240 is 120. Dividing both sides by 3 gives me 40. So I need 40 liters of Sunstream. How about Clearshine? Well, I know x plus y should be equal to 80. So just sticking in the 40 for y gives me that x is also 40.